Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any new videos. Today I have a quick design tutorial on how to create a half image, half text with the image embedded sublimation design in Affinity Designer. We are going to be working in the 2.0 version of the software, but the steps are all the same if you are using the 1.0 version of the software. If you enjoyed today's tutorial and you are interested in learning absolutely everything there is to know about Affinity Designer version one and version two's new updates and all those updates to come, please be sure to check out the Affinity Designer Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation. That link is below in the video description. That is our in-depth video course, perfect for beginners and intermediate users alike, that will teach you everything there is to know about the software. It includes interactive design challenges, opportunities to win prizes, and one-on-one -on -one email support if you get stuck. There's also a discount code sub that available anytime the masterclass is not on sale. You'll find those links and that code in the video description. Let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. We will start by opening up a new document that is roughly the size of what we would like our final design to be. In this case, it's just going to be a square. We'll come to File and then New or New Document if you happen to be using a Mac and it will open up your Document Setup panel. Now I already have some presets, but if you don't, you can just enter in the sizes that you would like. You wanna make sure to do a minimum of 3,600 pixels by 3,600 pixels at 300 DPI. For sublimation, you want to set your color format to RGB slash eight and your color profile, the most current one for RGB slash eight is this sRGB IEC followed by the numbers. However, if you are using either an older device or a Mac, you may benefit from using the Adobe RGB or RGB 1998 as those are the previous color profiles and with Macs in particular, they do tend to work better for sublimation color accuracy output. Keep in mind that color profile is not the ICC profile from your uh, printer ink setup. Those are two completely different things. Document setup is universal. Printer setup is not. When you're all set, go ahead and click create. Next, we want to import the clip art element, which we are going to be using. I am choosing to use a floral heart illustration available from Debbie Does Design. You can find the link in the video description for that element. You can click your place image tool over here in the sidebar. It's the icon that looks like a picture or you can come to file and select place. Your file explorer will open. You can select your clip bar element. And then when you see that downward arrow with the puddle, simply click and drag along your canvas to resize on import that element. And I like to do it this way because then you can really kind of get it as close to the size as you want right out of the gate. If you simply click one time when you import it, it's gonna import at full size and then you'll just have to use your little corner nodes to be able to resize it. Now I do have a bit of dead space on the outside of this, which isn't problematic with this particular design, but if it ever is bothering you, you can simply right click and rasterize and it should decrease the boundary box to be snug against the edges of the design. Now in this one, I noticed that there is some space here, which means that the computer is registering something that's there that I can't visibly see. So I'm going to go ahead and select my vector crop tool in that case, and then just bring this one in. And then just make sure you go back to that move tool. Now I'm gonna center this to start, although I do plan on adjusting it later on. So I'm gonna move it along my canvas until I see that red and green access line intersecting, which lets me know that I'm in the middle of the document space. These are activated when you slowly move it across and actually hit those lines. And when you have this magnet icon selected, when you hover over it, it says snapping. Now I'm actually gonna need two copies of my heart. So over here in the layers panel, we're gonna right click and duplicate. I'm gonna hide that top one just temporarily because um, we're gonna come back to that. Next, I want to grab my rectangle tool from my tool panel 
And over in my color panel, we're gonna give that no stroke and it's fine to have the fill any color cause we're just gonna be using it to erase. I'm gonna to move to the top of my canvas until I see that green access line in the middle and the red access line across the top, letting me know that I'm at the top of my document and in the middle. I'm then going to hold down my cursor, click and drag, and cover that whole half of the heart completely. I wanna bring this down in my layers panel just by grabbing that icon and moving it down so it's in between the two hearts but not, nestle, not nested in, in those layers. So it should still show as a full length, whole independent layer. I'm gonna to come to this drop down in my layers panel for the blend mode and I'm gonna go all the way down to where it says erase and apply that. Next, I want to hold down my shift key or control or command, select that second layer of the heart, right click and group. This will ensure that my erase layer only applies to that heart and nothing else. Now from here, I can choose to make some adjustments to my heart or I can add my text and then make the adjustments. I think that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So I will select my text tool. You can choose to use your frame text tool or artistic text tool here. I think that frame text tool is a better option simply because it will let us control how, how far uh, horizontally our text goes. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put it right up at the top just like we did with our rectangle, um, but I don't need it quite that high. I wanna actually focus on more like the, the top of the stem here. So I'm gonna click and drag across until I get that box filling that space. You just click inside to add your text. Um, 12 is gonna be a bit too small. Let's try like 125. And I'm gonna use Oswald font for this. Just a nice sans serif font that works pretty well for a project like this. So I'm using a Bible verse for this. All right, and let's see. Um, we're just gonna need to make some adjustments here. For one, I'm gonna put that down. For two, I'm just gonna drag that out a little bit. Um, I'm gonna shrink this down. What I do like about using the text box is that you get a little bit more control over the text itself. And let's see. Let's, I'm just gonna adjust the text a little bit is really all that I'm doing. I want it to look really good and work well for this particular design. I think I might need to decrease the size just a little bit or I might need to choose the um, Demi Bold. Yeah, let's go with the Demi Bold. I think that looks a little bit better. Okay, great. Uh, so I just wanna eyeball it. I'm gonna eyeball it and sort of adjust it to be centered with the heart. Now, this is too close. Our heart layer with the rectangle is too close to our other layer. Um, so we're gonna click on that, which is going to be this group that we've created. And we're just gonna move it over with my arrow key to create a little bit of space. That is great. The next thing I wanna do is decide if I want to have a little bit more of the heart itself showing. So this is where it's cut off, but I could show it a little bit more so it balances out the text better. And so I'm just gonna grab only the heart. So you're opening up the group and you're selecting that heart layer. And I'm just gonna move that over a little bit. Again, I'm just trying to balance out the overall look between the clip art element and the text itself. All that's left to do now is to select my second heart layer, that duplicate layer that we made, and I'm going to toggle on the visibility, and we're gonna clip this inside of the text itself. So I just click on the icon where that heart is, and I'm gonna drag it so that my cursor is touching the name of that text layer, just like that. And then if we wanna adjust this a little bit inside of here, we can by just clicking on that drop down arrow and selecting the heart and we could like move it over some if we want or decrease it a little bit. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. Now you will notice that some of our text is kind of getting lost with the design and that's okay. We can fix that by just adding a stroke to our text. So I'll select that text layer, come to my color panel, select the open circle. I'm gonna add black and then I'm gonna come to the stroke panel and I'm just gonna increase that width a little bit. 
I don't need it to be huge, just enough to really help our words stand out. Now you can click across and select all of your layers there and you can right click and group to have your completed design and then just center a little bit better. Now this approach that we're using is most beneficial because it's a non-destructive type of method for creating this type of design. It gives us total control over this clip art element and being able to adjust it and move it however we would like. And also just gives us the ability that if we wanted to swap this clip art element out for another one, we could. We don't have to worry about erasing part of the, the clip art element and then maybe we did too much. Like we get total control here. We can adjust every single layer to our liking until we are satisfied with it. I'm a big fan of using non-destructive um, options because it does create more versatility long run in anything that you are doing. Now for this particular project, I did wanna go ahead and add Gabriella's Warrior somewhere in here um, since this is for a little girl who is having a heart, or needs a heart transplant. She is on the donor waiting list at the time I'm filming this. So we're gonna add just a little text right here We'll do that with our artistic text tool, but first we need a line to put it on. We can create that with our pen tool, and then we'll just put a start point, put an end point. I'm gonna grab that node tool next, and I'm gonna just modify this curve. It doesn't really need a lot here to follow the path of this heart. Once you have your line in place, you can select the artistic text tool, click on that line, and I'm gonna use the same. We're gonna use this Oswald font. This is just from Google Fonts. It's um, one that I actually use quite a bit. And we're gonna make it say Gabriella's Warriors. It definitely needs to be bigger, so let's just resize that. Yes, 25 will work. Um, I want to align center. That's gonna align it along the curve. And then I'm just gonna use my arrow key to kind of bring this out a little bit so it can actually be visible. And the last thing I wanna do is give this a royal blue color. So we'll highlight that text. And I'm just choosing this royal blue because the colors of the awareness ribbon for um, this particular condition that this little girl has are red and blue. So I've gone ahead and put it that as well. Now you can just add this into your group by grabbing that layer and dragging it into the group just like that so that everything is in the group. This makes it easy on export. If you select your group, you'll notice everything is nice and tight to the edges how you want. You'll go to file, export, and right where it says area underneath your PNG settings, you're gonna select selection only. And then once you click that export button, your file explorer will open, you can save it, and you can use this for all of your future projects. Do make sure to collect selection only, not selection area, because selection area will actually export the checkered background as well. Whole document will export the whole document. So. Very easy to put together this type of design and so much versatility. You can do this with any clip art element, any type of quote, um, meaningful phrases, inspirational Bible verses, anything like that is hugely popular with this type of artwork element. If you choose to create a design like this for your sublimation business, please be sure to share it with us. We would love to see it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out all the links in the video description. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day.